So, today we shall start about multi threaded programming a very new concepts in programming arena and this multi threaded programming concept is very important to develop many different type of softwares. For example, Java is best suitable for developing application softwares such as library management system or processing system like this. It is also equally best suitable for developing system software such as compiler operating system. Now, such a system software development is possible using Java because of these features the multi threaded programming concept. Now, before going to understand about the different features so far the multi threaded programming is concerned first we should clear our idea about what exactly a multi threading is. Now, as the name says the multi threading it is basically a short form of multiple thread threading actually that is why multi threading. So, definitely so it is in contrast to single threading we can say. So, what exactly the concept of single threading is that uh, here uh, we can see this is a one example of a class which has one method. So, this is a method um, as we see and in this method as the execution takes place from the very first statement to the next statement, the next statement and so on so on. So, this way the multi threaded uh, uh, this way a thread will occurs. So, this way the thread will occur starting from this to uh, this uh, direction. So, we can say in other uh, other way about that if we start from the first statement like so is a begin then next statement then next statement next statement and so on and finally, it will go to the end of the statement and this way the threads or the execution that it takes place is called in a single threaded manner and then the execution is called the single threaded execution. Now, in contrast to this single threaded execution there is a concept called multi thread execution. Okay. Here is an example that we can use this example to explain the concept of multiple threading here. So, execution here will start from this point suppose and then uh, if we can bifurcate this execution into three or more uh, here for example, bifurcation into this is the one part, this is another part and this another part then it is called that. So, the execution will takes place in a concurrent manner that means, it will run this part, it will run this part and it will run this part. So, all three execution can takes place in a parallel manner or in a concurrent manner then we can say this is the multi threaded execution. So, this is the idea about the multi threading. Now, here one important point that we should note here is that whenever the threads are in execution all these threads can exchange the data among themselves. Here for example, the results that is produced by this thread can be used by this thread or vice versa like this. Also they can use the global data among them also not global data means common data among them also. Anyway, so this thread whenever they execute they execute in parallel and then the data exchange is quite possible among them. Now, as an another example we can consider uh, one more uh, another example uh, let us consider this is the one part of the program and here as we see this program or you can say the main method consists of different modules. So, this is the one module this is another module uh, search module print module. So, different modules are there. Now, if this program executes in a single threaded manner this means that this module will start its execution completes then only the next module will start and so on. So, this way the single threaded execution will take place. So, pictorially the single threaded execution will look like this. Yeah, pictorially the single threaded execution will look like this. So, it is this way 
Now, on the other hand, if the same thing which uh, if we run in a multiple threaded, then it will look like this. Yeah. So, if we run in a multiple threaded, then as we see here, uh, so in a multiple threaded app you see, so after the reading operation is there, it will bifurcate into three different what is called the parts, the sort, calculate and search. So, what you can say at this stage, there are three threads, sort thread, calculate thread and start thread, they can execute in parallel and once all these threads are finished their execution, it will come to this thread and then print will execute. So, this way the, these parts can execute in a multi threaded manner, this is single threaded manner. So, this is the concept of multi threaded uh, execution or is a program. Yeah. So, now we have learned about the idea about the multi threading uh, how it works is there. The, there are many examples that can be given where the multi threaded execution is obvious. So, whenever we are using our uh, system computer there are many tasks which is basically works in a continuous concurrent manner. For example, whenever reading uh, web page at the same time you can type into using word processor and at the same time you can play your music. So, all the things are going in parallel. So, for everything for playing a music there is a one thread for browsing the information from the internet one thread whenever you are typing something using an word processor application is another thread and all these things. Now, so there are many applications where the multi threaded way the executions are there and uh, to be carried out. So, that we can achieve maximum things from the system. Now, how this multi threading actually can be uh, achieved in our system? There are in fact, two ways the multi tasking and multi processing. So, in our few next slide we should understand about uh, what is the multi threading and multi tasking is. So, here the multitasking is also alternatively called the time sharing. That means, if we have to run the multiple programs together, so is a part of one program can share the CPU time or some other resource time and at the same time whenever the CPU is busy, it can share some other resource and this one or actually the idea is that multiple programs have their own time slots and each uh, program can use their time slots, so that they can execute this program. So, this is the way the multi uh, tasking uh, things can be achieved and uh, in a time sharing manner. Here is an example that we can use to explain how the multi tasking it is possible. And so, it is a basically single task, if it is a single task as we see whenever the single task require the CPU time it is there and if it requires at the same time some other resources say suppose input then the CPU is be idle. On the other hand once the input is reading is complete then it, the CPU is engaged for some other task. Once this task is complete then it may be some other task say some uh, printing and one printing is over another task and so on so on. So, what we can see is that CPU is not busy for all the time whenever it is executing a program if it is a single threaded because of some other resource requirements. So, this way actually the ec performance or effic efficiency or the thru throughput of the system is less as you can see uh, if we execute this way the code is executed only 57 percent where the system remain idle for 43 percent. So, this is not an efficient way of solving this program. On the other hand if we run two programs concurrently say P 1 and P 2 for example, whenever CPU is idle at the same time if we can engage the CPU by other program then whatever the idle time can be vanished and then CPU 
can utilize for 100 percent utilization. So, this way with the multitasking if it is possible here actually we can give the time slides p 1 into this time, the next this time and this time for the p 1, this time for p 2 and so on. So, the time can be sliced among the processes. So, this way it is not only for the two processes even multiple processes n number of processes can be time shared and time slice can be given to each processes. So, that CPU will be busy and then the program all programs will be executed in the fastest way. Now, so this is the idea about the multitasking is a one way of doing multi threading actually. So, now other than this the multitasking there is all called the multi processing. So, it is basically the idea is same it is also multi threading, but the pro idea is called uh, multiple processes can be engaged here. So, if there are say modules m 1 to m n, so all these modules can be assigned to different processors, so that all the processors can run concurrently in a parallel manner. So, this way the uh, program uh, the entire program can be executed uh, in a faster way and there are many multi processing uh, systems are available uh, today as you know for example, here uh, Pentium Xeon uh, having the 32 processors in it, Athlon X2 AMD is a dual core processor and then there are 4096 processor Cray X1 having so many processor. Now, so these are the high speed uh, uh, computing environment which basically allow to execute a program in a multi threaded manner. Now, so here is basically the two concepts so far the multitasking is concerns uh, so process and thread. So, basically the, the, the entire programs can have the different parts this is basically the process. So, is process is basically is a program is an executable form which can be loaded into the memory and then once the processes are loaded into the memory operating system can take care of the execution of each processes. And on the other hand there is a concept of threads which basically the idea about that how a process can execute in the system. So, it is basically uh, it is a thread is basically a sequential execution of a set of instructions one by one. So, there are multiple thread means there is a multiple set of sequential execution of a systems which can share the data among them. So, multi processors multiple processes uh, this basically multiple threads we can say and whenever one thread come into the picture it is basically is a single process with a single set of execution. So, multiple threads is basically uh, concurrent execution where is a single thread execution is called the lightweight process because it is a on thread actually. Now, so we have learned about the multi threading and we can learn that a multi threading means a concurrent execution. Now, let us see how this multi threading is useful to solve many problems as we are solving nowadays in our own computing system. Now, you know uh, whenever you are using the Gmail software or a Google browser. So, Gmail software is basically loaded into some server is a Google server Gmail server and you know at the same time the billion of peoples are using the same Gmail server in fact. Then how this Gmail server processes all the Gmail users actually at the same time. So, it is basically the, the, the Google server which basically run the Gmail softwares in their own system they processes all the users in a multiple threaded manner. So, this is one example of the multiple threading as we see from here a user a user can place a request or can browse the Gmail from the say Firefox another internet explorer another may be opera. So, all the request goes to the server uh, at the same time. So, billion of requests are there then this server can process them all the request individually in a multi threaded program. However, a user can think that okay, this server is dedicated to his service. So, all user can think that okay, I am getting as if I am the only sole uh, user in the system. Actually, 
uh, the Google server serves multiple users at the same time and this is possible because of uh, that multi threading concept as it is followed in execution. Now, so there is idea about this one and then basic purpose of this multi and this is another example another example of multi threading using multiple processor. So, idea it is that if so many users one single server cannot handle then at the end the multiple server can take care and then they can use it. So, here only two server as you see instead of two server a large number of servers can take care and then multi threading also can be done in a multi uh, processing manner also. So, basic idea about that it will not only process multiple programs in execution, but it reduces overall time of executions for all programs. So, this is a great advantage that one can achieve using multi threading manner and this is another example as you see in, in, in the context of internet programming. Uh, so, the idea is that if a many users are there in network access the network with different devices like laptop, mobile phone, PDA, uh, personal computer whatever it is there. Now, all the users those are there in the system they are connected to a server called the proxy server. And then so this proxy server can know that which request to pass to home in what way. So, if so there is basically uh, the different other servers those are distributed worldwide and then from this internet server the request will go and then they basically process all the requested and, and they, that again that is uh, that at the end of the service. So, another request also come from another network they also process and then they produce the output and the output go to the again this proxy and then they can again transmit to this way and this way uh, the multiple execution uh, uh, takes place so far the internet programs are concerned. So, this is the concept of internet programming and internet programming is today possible because, because of the concept of multi threading uh, as it is possible. So, there are multiple servers that can execute in, in parallel as we see here for example, this is the internet server and there is basically service request that receives by a server that needs for to process the different clients. And then here as you see this server can run many threads. So, they are called the multiple threads server threads and all this server one executed pop, uh, parallelly. So, overall time that is required to get its service will be reduced uh, uh, remarkably, remarkably and that way we can improve the performance of the system. So, there are many example as we see where the multi threading is there. Now, this is the in the context of internet related application. Now, even in our single uh, PC system also we need the multiple threading. Here for example, the user whenever editing a document at the same time he can fire a print command to print one paper. So, to him both the things editing as well as printing takes place together. So, this is also possible because here the system can take care two threads one editing thread another is a printing thread. So, is a pages will be printed one by one it will control the printer buffer and then get the response and then do it. So, the system which is here can control both the applications together. So, this is one example even in the single user environment also the multi threading is required uh, in our uh, problem solving. And here is another example also uh, so far the operating system level is concerned we also uh, uh, require the multi threading. Say suppose we are reading something from our hard disk at the same time we are copying something from our pen drive or floppy disk to hard disk. So, how this thing is possible again this is possible because of the multi threaded program. So, they are actually two programs one is the writer and the reader. The reader will read from the flop uh, hard disk and writer will write into the hard disk and both the things will take place uh, together in a multiple threaded manner. So, this thread and this thread will execute in parallel 
and in a multi threaded manner actually. So, there are several applications as we see where the multi threading is must. Okay, so, we have learned about why multi threading. Now, this is our turn to learn about how this multi threading is possible in Java. There are many features, many concepts are known, okay, available in this context. We will learn all these features one by one in the next uh, few slides. So, here is basically the multi threading is done in the different level. First is the code level then medium grain the control level and then fine grain it is the data level and this way very fine grain the data level it is there. So, here basically in the first code level multi threading is possible because we have to first decompose the program into different tasks where all tasks can be done independently. So, at the tax level or is a code level is called the code granularity or the task level the multi threading will start first. That means, you have to when you write the program you can tell that okay, this is the piece of the code and this is the other piece of the code the two tasks they can do independently and then two threads can be planned for that. One it is there then we can write the threads for each and then the all the threads can be uh, takes place and then at the execution level it basically creates the process for each thread is basically the code that is executable. For example, in case of your Java uh, execution the byte codes for each threads actually it is there. So, it is a grand. So, for each thread there is a separate codes that can be placed there and finally, at the CPU level uh, for each code can take place in a interleaving or in a concurrent manner as it is basically whether uh, that is the operating system can manage how this task, this task and this task can be carried out parallelly. So, they can use uh, some uh, process synchronization from time sharing or many other methods that the operating system can follow for you to execute to more than one thread together. So, this is the idea about the parallelism is takes place in this right and Java programming is basically helps us to implement all this concept here but at is a very high level concept. So, we do not have to bother so much details uh, which is basically there only we have to think about uh, this code level and then this is the uh, that code level if we can plan it uh, that means, program level we can say we if we can plan it then we will be able to achieve the multi threading. So, Java exactly uh, does for these things um, for us for the programmer. Now, so, so here basically single thread versus multiple thread as we say earlier that this is the one single thread if it is there one execution if the multiple thread mean multiple executions and they can use the common memory common data together actually this is the idea. Now, now uh, therefore, what we learnt is as a summary that a thread is a piece of code that runs in a parallel manner with other threads and each thread is a statically ordered sequence of instruction. That means, each thread is basically one set of a sequential instruction we can say and all threads are uh, extensively used to express concurrency whether in a single or multi processor machine whatever it is there. That means, either in a time sharing or in a multi uh, uh, processing whatever it is there. Now, so, now let us see the features which are there so far the multi threading is concerned. Mainly three things that we have to learn about that how to create a thread and how to schedule the thread. So, this is the first thing and then second thing is that how the inter thread communication can be takes place and finally, the synchronization of these threads. So, in Java there are many what is called the methods are available and there is again package. The package uh, which basically responsible for 
running multiple threads are there. Now, the different process that is related to I mean all these tasks like thread creation, thread scheduling, thread execution and then inter process, thread communication, synchronization. There are few methods which we have mentioned here, uh, these are the methods is basically there. Now, these are the threads execution is done by uh, uh, a uh, is basically automatic uh, one manager. So, it is runtime manager we can say the thread manager and this automatically run for you. Now, an example of a thread which usually occur in whenever you run a java program is called the garbage collector. There is also uh, so this garbage collector is basically take the memory and then how the memory can be efficiently used. Now, so there are many other concepts are there which basically to be considered whenever we have to schedule the thread and then control inter process communication among the different threads and then synchronizations. Now, for all these activities there is a package which is there in the java JDK called the java dot lang and in this java dot lang there is a class thread and one interface called runnable. So, these are the two main things that is there in the java and so far the multi threading learning is concerned we have to learn this class thread and interface runnable and using this thread and interface runnable we have to learn about how the multi threading is possible. Now, the basic concept about so far the creating a thread is concerned you write a program for a thread that is basically the task and then once the thread is ready then you have to first run the thread and then before running we have to start this. So, basically to start and then this. So, whenever a thread is built it is basically inactive thread and if you can start it the thread become alive and from the alive threads run until it terminates when the thread is terminated the thread is called the dead. So, doing I mean for controlling all this start run and everything. So, there is a procedure which is defined methods which are defined there in the class thread and in the runnable interface. So, as you know it is an interface this means the methods are abstract and public that means we have to write our own code how to run the thread and obviously how to start it. Now, basically the main idea about that if we use a thread as a class which is there and then your thread should inherit this thread class to build the run method. So, it is basically we have to override the run method if we use thread class. On the other hand if we use the runnable interface then we have to implement the interface using your thread class and then there also we have to implement the run method. So, this is the basic concepts. Now, we will discuss about using the both how the thread can be created and then how the thread can be executed. So, let us first start the discussion about how we can create a thread with the thread class. So, idea is very simple we have to extend the java dot lang package thread class and a, uh, a thread class can be created and if we use the interface then we have to uh, implement the interface here. Now, here is an example that we can see how we can create a thread and what are the methods are there. So, here basic idea about that. Uh, this is the class thread extends uh, objects implements runnable whatever it is there. So, public thread these are the methods these are the, uh, the constructor I can say the thread has the constructor in a different form where name of the thread the interface runnable uh, object can be passed to them and then both name and threads and everything and there are run and two. So, these are the basic structure of the class thread which is defined in the java date line package. So, it is simple not so very complex things are there. Now, we will slowly uh, okay, one learn one by one how all those things can be handled in our program. So, this is about the thread class as you see there are constructors and there is a two methods run and start and all these two methods are as it is basically overwrite uh, because it is abstract or uh, whenever it is, uh, it is there. And so far the different methods do are concerned in the thread class other than the, the start and run method also it includes few more methods which we have listed here uh, join, get live, get name, is alive, setting priority, sleep, yield and so on. So, these are the few methods are very okay. learning all these methods will basically complete our learning about uh, 
uh, the thread execution ok now let us first discuss about how we can create our own thread using class thread so this is basically a typical steps or procedure that you should follow in your program so here you have to declare a class of your own that is basically your thread class which should extend the thread class that is there in java.lang package and then this is the run method we have to override this run method in your program and then once this thread class is created you can use this thread class to create your own thread so this is your own thread and this is basically creating a thread objects and then if we call the start method for this thread object so the thread will uh, start its execution and then then the uh, run will be invoked so the run method will be invoked so that uh, the the alive thread can execute in the system. Now, here is basically the idea about uh, okay, idea about creating the program, this is a complete program that we can see here and as you see uh, this is the one thread class as we have declared. So, class thread A extends 3, so thread A we create a thread of our own and this thread uh, we in this thread we declare the run method of our own you can see the run method is declared here it is basically there is a loop loop will roll for i equals to 1 to i less than equals to 5 and whenever loop will roll it will print this one so what you can say that this thread thread a whenever it will run it will print uh, then five negative numbers one by one on the other hand there is another thread we have created thread b it is similar to this thread but here in this run method we define this kind of code it basically run the event numbers so two threads as we see we have declared here and once the threads are declared we can use it so these are the two two threads in addition to these two threads there is one more threads also Yeah. So, okay. so, thread A and thread B that we have discussed in addition to thread and th there is another thread C this basically also the similar run method which we have discussed here. So, what you can say that we have created three threads thread A, thread B, thread C creating three thread is basically the business about that how we can define the run method that means uh, the how the thread will execute. I can tell one example suppose if you have to create two threads one for sorting program another for searching program so in the run method you have to implement the sorting algorithm maybe say quick sort and another run method which basically thread for searching we can implement the binary search algorithm it is an example like this so in the in the current example we have created three threads to print the three different types of number one is negative number even number and odd number so, these are the threads uh, creation. Now, let us see how once the threads, uh, threads are created how we can utilize in our program. So, this is basically the main method as we see the main method it is there name under this class this is the main class. Now, here we just look these things uh, carefully what we can do is we create uh, one thread object A of the thread thread A. Similarly, B and C are the thread objects for the two different thread B and thread C namely. So, here we can see three different threads objects are created. Now, so A dot start and B these are the basically once the thread object is created we can start execution of this thread. So, here basically to do this thing we have to call the start method for A, B and C. Now, at this point what happened is that this is the single thread that is creating this and then uh, immediately a dot start the one thread for a thread thread a for b thread b and c for thread c will be executed. This will print the negative number, this will print the even number and this will print the odd numbers 
and then finally, whenever it will come at the end of this one, it will come to this system dot out print ln and it will print that that multi threading is over. So, this way the thread will execute in our program. So, what we have learned is that there are two main methods that is basically more crucial whenever the thread is there the run by the run method you have to declare that what is the task that to be accomplished by a thread and then the start method. So, start method is already defined here there in the uh, java dot lang dot thread class. So, just we have to use it to start the execution of the thread. So, this is the concept about the thread creation and then finally, execution of thread. Okay. So, we have learned about how the thread can be created using thread class and in our next uh, module, we will discuss about other way of running threads and managing the threads. Thank you very much.